Welcome to the No Name MMA Show, the best damn MMA podcast you've never heard of. Thank you for joining me, Motivated Andy, on this September 7th, 2021. Hope everyone had a good long Labor Day weekend. This will be a short episode, seeing as there are no fights this week. Yeah, there was Darren White's Contender Series yesterday, but you know what I mean. The rest of the gang will be back for a full episode for next week. Ugh, next week's card uh, featuring Ryan Spann versus Anthony Smith. But we're not going to be diving into that, so let's get down into the nitty-gritty and dive into this week's topics. First, we have the debut of Patty Pimblett. Patty the Batty uh, came up uh, going up against Mario Villanemi or whatever the fuck, and at least we got what we were advertised as a first-round finish. My thoughts... Patty is exciting, but let's be real. The debut did leave me with some doubts seeing Patty just have his chin straight up higher than somebody who's overdosing on heroin for the first time. Yeah, he's young, and yeah, he has experience, but also, this is the 155 division, the crown jewel of the UFC. If anything, the only thing I can think of is how Julian Rosa did manage to come up short uh, to a decision loss versus Patty. Uh, and that was in 2016. I mean, are we serious? Like, how long has Patty been fighting? And how fucking old is he? Isn't he like 23? Immediately, uh, my first thought is that we just see this rematch. This should be the next one for Patty, bar none. Uh, it's good for his name. It gives him a proper rematch. And it's a proper challenge. As far as I'm concerned, though, the Patty hype train has left the station. And if anybody, leave, if everybody's word of mouth tells me he's going to be the next Conor McGregor. Nah. Anyway, uh, now for the next topic, we have the oblique kick heard around the world where Khalil Roundtree Jr. landed a super clean one against Modestus Bagakis. Uh, Modestus uh, ended up turning slightly before the kick landed, less leaving his knee further exposed. Um, now, there seems to be two lines of thinking regarding the kicks. One is that it's a technique that people should be aware of that's available for anybody and you should watch out for it and defend against it. If not, then that's on you. This is MMA after all. Should we ban head kicks? I mean, they can knock you out. Or, I mean, should we ban elbows? They cause all the damage, uh, scar tissue. I mean, we're talking about cuts and everything. Uh, have we seen what Corey Sanhagen's flying knees can do? I mean, at that point, go ahead and ban that. Uh, but there's also the other side of the argument that says that one technique should not have all that power credit to Kanye West but I mean it's one kick that could possibly it's one technique that could possibly take you out for a whole year it's not even like a concussion where you're, you're gonna be back um, why not protect the fighters at least by one technique give them the give them an opportunity to not be out for a whole year uh, why not just ban that one as to where I stand uh, I'm not gonna lie I'm pretty much on the side of the fence where if I can use something to win that's allowed, I'm going to use that. Um, I have to keep that same energy though. Other fighters that think that one specific thing should not be allowed in a fight and that it's too dangerous. I mean, I'm not a fucking fighter. Who the fuck am I to say no to that? I mean, uh, fighters put their shit on the line for my fat ass to enjoy with no repercussions. So anything that a fighter asks for, I'm going to give it to them. I can't keep the same energy for them wanting more pay, but then be like, ah, you know what? Fuck you and your fucking knee ligaments. So I understand the argument. I still very much believe that it's a technique that should be looked out for. And, you know, it's on you to defend yourself. But also... The technique can cost you months at a time, mad hospital expenses, possibly surgery. But I don't know. Where do you guys fall on the subject? You ban the fucker? This is MMA? Or go fuck yourself. Go watch some fucking baseball. You fucking child. Anyway. But last but not least, let's talk about the main event of the evening between Darren Till and Derek Brunson, where Derek played spoiler yet again to the Scousers as well as another fan favorite. But, I mean, he just mauled Darren. Uh, Darren ended up going uh, one in four in his last five. 
Uh, Derek Brunson is now on a five fight win streak. And as far as I'm concerned, he has solidified his title shot against the winner of Izzy versus Rob. But on the other side of the coin, we have Darren Till, who is one and four in his last five again. Uh, with his only win um, after getting out wrestled and submitted by Tyron Woodley, coming by that split decision win over Kelvin Gastelum, another middleweight that is on tenuous grounds. As much as I want to say that I am surprised, Darren enjoyed the success of being a big welterweight, and now he sees that he's not as big when it comes to middleweight, and it costs him in the middleweight division. Hopefully something changes with him, either with a change in camp or a move back down to welterweight. Uh, something needs to change, though. But yeah, I leave you with this heartbreak. Good on Derek Brunson. You made North Carolina proud, even though I didn't ask you to. Uh, yeah, what do you think? Let us know. What do you think about banning shit? Patty the Batty get to be the new Conor McGregor? Or last week's main event, should Brunson fight again in order to get a title shot? Should he fight Jared Cannonier, the winner of Marvin Vittori versus Paul Acosta? What should his next move be? What about Darren Till? I don't know. Let us know on Instagram at no.name.mma.show, Twitter at no name MMA one and through email at no name MMA show at gmail.com. But yeah, that's it. Talk to you guys next week. Talk at you guys next week. Uh, whatever the fuck, I don't know. Um, and as always, fuck you, John Jones. There he is. <laughs>